Hello and welcome to beautiful Lillishall here in Great Britain for the first leg of the European Grand Prix. We've got a fabulous day of archery coming up today and we're going to start with the compound medal matches. Later on this afternoon, we'll switch our attention to the recurve competition. But for now, it's all about the 50 meter range. Well, we can see this uh, beautiful range here in Lillishaw. We're just on the west side of England, in the middle of the country. I'm Karen Bashir, and it's my great pleasure to welcome the fabulous Olympic archer, Chef Vandenberg. Chef, conditions looking pretty good here in Lillishaw. Yeah, there's a little bit of a breeze, I think, but uh, it looks sunny, which is, uh, from what I understand, <laughs> uh, an exception to the rule here. And uh, yeah, looks to be a good match today, a good day of matches. Certainly is, and uh, they're coming out here. The, you can see this beautiful old uh, building here in Little Shore. This is one of the national sports centers in Great Britain with a dedicated archery range. Well, I say dedicated, they've turned uh, the grounds into an archery range here in Little Shore. And coming up first, we've got the compound women's team gold medal match, and it's the host nation who will be featuring in this match. Great Britain go up against Italy in this one. So there we have it. Uh, Great Britain line up against Italy. Italy have Paola Natalie, Sarah Rett, and Marcella Tonioli in the lineup. Great Britain with Elizabeth Foster, Ella Gibson, and Jessica Stretton. Chef, um, I think it's uh, plain to see for everyone. Uh, Great Britain are fielding a wheelchair athlete in Jess Stretton. How does that work with the lineup? Um, essentially, it's just the same, the same as a normal team match where um, you have a rotation. Um, the difference is that uh, Jess will stay in her seat and she will raise her hand rather than uh, get off the line when she's done shooting. So there's still going to be this uh, team rotation thing going on. So here we go. Compound women's team gold medal match and it's Ella Gibson from Great Britain to get us underway. Nine. Nine. So both with a little bit of a slow start, but it is the uh, first match of the day. It's a little bit cold still. Stratton with the woolly hat, showing us that there's a little chill in the air this morning. So a wreck to get things underway for the Italian team. We switched through uh, the two rotations. Eight. Both teams will have each archer shooting two arrows in uh, a cumulative score. 
scenario. So the score will just build through the whole match. Nine. So you can see that uh, the archers do have long sleeves on and they uh, do have body warmers on, but you cannot get too thickly dressed um, in situations like these because then you need to have the string uh, past your arm without hitting anything. So you can see they have all like tight long sleeves or they have body warmers. Um, rather than hoodies or something maybe warmer like a winter jacket and that's just to uh, give the string some space to go forwards yeah. 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 Oh, Jess Stratton can put this out of reach here for Italy if she shoots another 10 Nine. A nine for a 57. So three tens required from Italy to uh, level up here. Eight, nine, nine. It looks like she didn't really expect that one not to be in the middle. Uh, so she was adjusting her side a bit, and uh, maybe that will do the trick for her. Tonioli anchoring the Italian team, most experienced in the lineup for the Italians. Nine. So provisional 54 could potentially get marked up to a 55 with that uh, third, sorry, that fourth arrow from Italy uh, on the line. Uh, great Britain getting off to a great start on home soil. Yeah, there's a uh, three point divide between them, which is in recurve that would have been uh, one set given away or one set won by uh, GPR. But uh, in compound, you still have uh, 18 arrows to get back into this match, so uh, nothing is lost just yet. Now that's the handy thing about uh, compound archery because it's an accumulative score, they can uh, close the gap Italy over the remaining ends of the match. So, Chef, a warm up here at the beginning of a, a little a bit of a chilly day, but it's a bit of a warm up for us too because. Uh, World Archery, I think, have announced that uh, you are going to be the key analyst over the, the course of this season. Yeah, that is correct. I will be uh, flying in to do some, uh, some commentary with you guys, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Do you know anything about archery? A little bit, yeah. I've seen it <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> So you retired after uh, the, the last games. Uh, how's, how's, how's the life of retirement going? How's your dog? <laughs> My dog is very well. <laughs> she is now out on the walk, so uh, she is not uh, barking through this uh, live stream. Um, and uh, yeah, she's doing well. Well, it's going to be a delight to have you uh, next to me throughout uh, the course of this season. And uh, well, let's let's just enjoy this this warm up competition. It's not a warm up for these guys though. Great Britain leading Italy at the moment by fifty seven points to fifty four. End number two. Then Italy trailing by three. And Sarah Rett steps up to the shooting line. There you go. She uh, adjusted her side, it seems, and uh, is still adjusting her side. But I think from now on, we'll see a much tighter group from her.
And also, this is exactly what Italy needs to be doing if they want to catch up with uh, GBR. They, they're shooting first because they're the trailing team in the match, which means they can put some pressure on, and that's what they're actively doing, I would say. Gibson with the first arrow through Great Britain's first rotation. Chef, quick question here. Mm. Given that Gibson's had such a fantastic 18 months, is it a surprise that she's not anchoring the British team? Um, well, there is two main positions, I would say, in the team. Uh, opening a match is always very um, you know, stressful, and, and uh, opening a, uh, an end is also stressful can be stressful to some um, and then closing or anchoring the match or the end can be very stressful then again i think jess has a lot of experience in her own right as well so i think they uh, probably deliberately put it in this order because uh, i think jess is also very uh, very good with handling stress so i think uh, they they arrange the team in a nice way Just on the line, that will get a 10. 58 is a good end, but uh, Great Britain is also shooting very well, so uh, let's see if they can keep their lead going. Yep. 10. Nine. Ten and nine in the uh, last end for Stratton. Nine. Just, three. just a little bit unlucky, maybe, with uh, a very good group of arrows. Their arrows are very close to each other, but also right outside of the ten. So um, it doesn't always mean that a good group scores the best. <laughs> So she might want to, want to do, uh, adjust her sight a little bit. Have you shot here, Chef, at Lillishaw? Unfortunately not. It looks like a great venue. Um, I've just never been. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting venue in terms of uh, the, the layout. As you can see, there's this big building on one side of the shooting line. But we're kind of like in a bit of a, a valley, if you like. How, yeah. how does that affect the wind? Well, I was just looking at the uh, little piece of string that Ella has on her stabilizer, and it was pretty much hanging straight down. It was completely plump. So uh, I think they might be sheltered from the wind a little bit in the place that they're standing right now. So uh, I'm hoping to see a lot of high-level and high-scoring matches today. Here we take a look back at Jess Stratton. Just making some adjustments, but uh, clearly it's still a little chilly out here in the, the west of England. Great Britain leading by a single point now. Italy have clawed back the three-point deficit just down to one as we head into uh, the third end here. And you say chilly, and what's difficult about archery in that regard is that you cannot warm yourself up by uh, you know doing a couple of sprints or uh, running after a ball or like you're not that physically active in a in a competition setting like this but you do have to stay warm because with cold fingers and with cold muscles you're never going to be as precise uh, as when you're warm so 
you need to find ways to stay warm even though you're mainly standing still in the, in the finals like this. So Sarah Rett into the middle to start in number three. It was not the greatest shot we've seen so far, but she still manages to stick it into the gold. So I think the damage was uh, not as bad as it could have been. So you say not the greatest shot in the world. What in particular did you not... I don't want to say you don't like about it, but what, what did you spot that was uh, difficult? Uh, there was a little bit of a flinch, a little bit of a moment where I think she was maybe out of concentration or um, she just had a bit of a, yeah, a flinch. And uh, typically that doesn't bode well for the rest of your shot, but she manages to stick it into the gold anyways, which is impressive. Best shot of the match so far from uh, Ella Gibson, right on the spider in the centre of the target. Another one of those unlucky ones, I would say. Uh, the commentator or the announcer says that it's a 9-10 liner, but I'm pretty certain it's a 9. Yeah, me too. Lovely shot there as well. Pretty tight match here. Italy clawed back a deficit in the second end, but uh, Great Britain have taken charge through the first rotation here in end number three. But another beauty of a 10. Yeah, so even oh. though she started off with uh, two eights on the right, she adjusted her sight, and then ever since then, I think she's only shot 10s. So she's doing well now. Uh, the countdown clock had begun. Coach calling out the last 10 seconds there for Tonioli. But a 169 is very, very gettable for Great Britain here. 172 with three tens. That's the first one from Gibson. Yeah, so only two nines and they'll start the last end with a one point lead but obviously they want to extend their lead even more than that yeah. not sure i'm supposed to say it but i think it's a 10. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're definitely supposed to say it i think that's a 10 too and that is a 10 from jess stratton so a 59 for great britain in end number three now what they did there is they got back the points that they won in the first end because after the first end they were leading with three points and now they are leading with three points again um, after the first end i said three points is very easy or it's possible to overcome in uh, in three more ends in one end, it's going to be a heavy task, I think, especially with uh, the way Great Britain is shooting right now. They haven't had really surprising arrows or uh, arrows that stray far off the middle. So, yeah, a 58 for Great Britain, no matter what the Italians do. Um, I think this is going to be uh, difficult for Italy to come back from this, but I like to see a bit of a comeback, but we'll see. Yeah, so as you'll alluding to here chef one more end of archery to go two arrows per archer ella gibson looking at the knock on her arrows did it look like there was something wrong there no it's just a, a routine check i'd say uh, every time you get your arrows back you kind of want to check if the the knocks have any cracks if the the veins don't have any rips in them um, 
you just want to make sure that you leave nothing to chance. Uh, you want to look at your arrows and, and check if everything is in the right order. Um, because if anything is broken, it might result in a bad shot. Um, and especially in this format with cumulative scoring, there's no way to get back from a miss. Uh, so you don't want to uh, get any of those, preferably. So Italy looking to fight back here in the fourth and final end, trailing by three points. They shoot first, and the job here is to put some pressure on Great Britain. Well, they are doing just that. They are putting pressure on uh, Great Britain. But like I said, they have to shoot a really good end and then hope that Great Britain misses more than they kind of want to miss. So. Can't ask for more than that from Italy. Three tens to start off this final end. Proper pressure on Great Britain now. Lost out to Germany in the semi-finals, and Gibson looking to begin. This final end for Great Britain starts with a beauty of a 10. So you can see the little plate that's in front of the left eye of uh, Elizabeth. And... Um, for some people, uh, they use it because their left eye is dominant, but they're right-handed archers. Um, in other cases, it's just to make sure that you can keep both your eyes open and relax so you still have uh, vision on only your scope. Um, if you open both eyes and, and it's uh, you kind of see two scopes and, and it's difficult to focus on just one, uh, so some people opt for yeah, a little vision-blocking plate on their uh, cap. Sarah has had six tens in a row now after her first two arrows drifting off to the right. So she adjusted her sights and just went for it. Bella, indeed. A beautiful shot from Sarah and Paola Natale. Tonioli, can she put it into the ten for a perfect? She can indeed. Can't ask for more than that. A 229 set by Italy. Bronze medal in the hands of Great Britain, though. And first up for the second rotation, it's Ella Gibson. So That's now, by, pressure here. Yeah, by Italy shooting that 60 they will need to shoot at least a 10 and a 9 to stay in this match and preferably two 10s to win yeah. the medal so <laughs> yeah a lot of pressure on elizabeth foster into the x ring whoa what a pressure shot this is now Oh, that is close. That is really close. Now, Chef, this is why you're here. You can call that a 10 or a 9. With the resolution on my monitor, it seemed like a 10. It but looked very, very I don't close. Want to Great Britain look like they're celebrating, don't they? Yeah, and, and I think their scope is better than our uh, camera <laughs> at the moment, so. Very tight. I mean, what pressure Italy put on there with a perfect 60 to finish the match off. Uh, and a huge amount of pressure on Jess Stretton, who 
we think has just cut the line for a 10. That'll give them a 58 and enough for the match. Well, I think that cheer says a lot there. A 10 scored for Jess Stretton for a 2.30, which just beats Italy to the bronze medal. Great Britain winning 2.30 to 2.29. But that final arrow pressure, Chef, huge, right? Yeah, yeah it was huge. And uh, I'd like to say gold medal in, uh, in this case, since they just won the gold right. medal match. You're right, um, it's a gold medal match, of course it is. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so a gold for Great Britain at the first time of asking here in Lillishaw. Uh, Italy settling for the bronze medal. But boy, they put up a great fight at the end, didn't they? Yeah, they did. The, they cannot really blame themselves from not coming back from uh, that deficit. Uh, and I think they should pride themselves in shooting a 60 when it most mattered. So I think uh, they did really well and uh, GBR just did slightly better. They certainly did. Ella Gibson, Jess Stratton and Elizabeth Foster taking the gold for Great Britain. Paola Natale, Sara Rett and Marcella Tonioli for Italy claiming the silver medal. And Chef, your home country, the Netherlands, taking the bronze medal, beating Germany in that playoff uh, 216 to 212. So they will be on the podium a little bit later, along with Italy and the champions of the compound women's team competition, Great Britain. So the British team starting off very well here on the home soil in Lillishaw with uh, the team of Foster, Gibson and Stretton taking gold at the European Grand Prix first leg in the West Midlands of Great Britain. So the first match of the day concluded Great Britain taking the uh, gold medal from Italy. Netherlands picking up the bronze medal in the compound women's team competition. Coming up very shortly, we've got the compound men's team gold medal match. And Italy feature again, a second bite of the cherry for the Italians as they take on Greece. Judge, 
So time now for the compound men's team gold medal match here at the European Grand Prix first leg in Lillishaw, Great Britain, as Italy take on Greece for the title here. Time now to welcome the athletes out onto the range. So here we go, Italy versus Greece for the compound men's team gold medal. Italy lining up with Marco Bruno, Elia Freinan and uh, Micha Gordano. And of course, you've got to love a Greek name. Uh, the Greek team line up with Konstantinos Drakiotis, Athanasios Kostopoulos and Stavros Kumatas. I might have some trouble with those names. Greece will begin this gold medal match in the compound men's team competition. Kermatus starting with a nine. Is that was Italy starting with the uh, two nines and a ten? So far, most of the arrows have gone a bit to the right, I would say. That one's gone very right. So I think there might be a bit of a difference between the practice field and the actual competition venue. Costopoulos looks like he may have cut the line there. Oh, nice shot from Freinen. Ah! 
very close to his first arrow, but uh, this one is within the tendering rather than just out. Um, I'm sure he'll give his side a couple clicks, and then he should be good after that. There was a big swing of his left arm and you could see he was frustrated by where that shot broke. Um, I think his sight was just on the right of the target uh, or on the right side somewhere. And he tried to correct it, but it's very difficult to do that with a compound ball where the arrow leaves that fast. Right on the time as well. Got it out in time. But uh, provisional 54 for Drakiotis, Kostopoulos and Kometis from Greece. Uh, it looks like a 56 from Italy. The uh, third arrow uh, is marked for a measure for both teams. Did you see anything in particular that you would uh, change in terms of the score there, Chef? I think the Italian arrow has less of a chance to hit the line than the Greek arrow in this case. But uh, I don't know if I would, uh, I would be confident to call it out like that if I were the judge from this uh, vantage point. So it's good that there's a, a judge there, a target judge who has a way better view than, uh, than we do. And that is what we have to wait for. Greek team keeping their spirits high. We've seen in the last match that it's uh, it's very possible to uh, have a bit of a comeback at the end of the match. So, yeah, and you mentioned right at the beginning, Chef, that you felt that there was probably some difference between uh, the conditions on the uh, practice range compared to uh, the the finals range in this little bowl here. Um, yeah, do you think the teams would have adjusted by this point? Um, I think they should have. I think um, right now this is also a bit of a game of communication between the, the members of the team, but also uh, people from the outside. So what you can do in a situation like this is that somebody who is not shooting at this uh, stage, he goes and looks at the practice range and, and uh, sees where people are hitting. And then uh, when that particular team goes to the finals venue, you can say like, oh, uh, seems like they're all hitting a little bit to the right or uh, before they go on they adjust their sight a bit so you can have a little bit of a, a spy walking around and see if, uh, mm -hmm. if teams adjust to the situation or uh, and if they do how they adjust to the situation so there's a uh, yeah there's a little bit more to the to the game than meets the eye leave no stone unturned i think is what you're saying yeah greece Trailing uh, by three, it turns out that arrow was marked down in the uh, first end. Eight. Again, almost in the same hole as before. Well, you're right, Chef. It's uh, it was to provisionally it was marked as a, a 53, but uh, when the scores got confirmed just at the start of this second end that arrow was marked up so uh, an eight and a nine talked about adjusting to the conditions but there's still 
seem to be drifting off to one side. Yeah, and it looks like the the flags are picking up some more wind now as well. Um, and I don't think you can really mm. notice it on the line because they're so sheltered behind that building. But if you look at the back of the field and at the, the windsock and the little flags, you can definitely see that there is a, a drift from left to right. Um, and I think it's difficult for the archers to anticipate on it because you don't feel how much it is. You can only go by the flags. Yeah, that's a good point. If we get a look down the range, or when, when we get a chance to have a look down the range, you're right, Chef. That building blocks out, what, the first 25, 30 meters? And then yeah. when the building stops, there's a, a space for the wind to blow. And Italy, I think the though, difference right now, the difference right now between the teams is uh, you can see that Italy is actively communicating about, okay, I aimed off here, or I didn't aim off, but I, uh, uh, I feel like my arrow hit there, or... Uh, whereas Greece, they shoot their arrows and then it's relatively quiet behind the line. Um, so that's where in this team format you need to be able to rely on each other and uh, rely on the information you gather by yourself and, and by just looking at the people around you. Nine. See, so he shoots a nine on the right, again, uh, and then he just walks off the line, and then there is no talking, no communication. Uh, they might be doing that on purpose, uh, not to give anything away, but um, I think they might do better if they communicate a little better about where they are aiming. Ten. Right on the buzzer again. Nine. It looks like on the line there is next to no wind, so they can at least just aim in the, the spot that they want to aim without being blown around too much, so that's good. Um, but it is also deceiving, because you can see that the first arrow went to the right again and he was a bit surprised by it, um, and I think the surprise was mostly that the flags were kind of they were lying down again they weren't uh, blowing around so much so he was like oh now it's fine to hit the middle or shoot in the middle but then there is more of a drift that you can see with the naked eye so that's that's one of the difficult things about archery and especially um, if it's really windy you can see it and you can feel it and but if there's like a little drift it can just get you off guard and it can just be enough to not hit the, the middle but you can uh, shoot a couple nines and the other team might just hit a couple tens and uh, the match is on again. Yeah, I mean, the, the Italians uh, have only put it in the uh, in the yellow at the moment. Uh, Italy have had three eights. Uh, sorry, Greece have had three eights uh, through the match. They'll, they'll need to up that game as uh, the women's team from Italy looking on. Tonioli, Rett and Natale claiming the silver in the compound women's team competition looking on at uh, Freyne and Bruno and Godano. Yeah, and even that might be an advantage because the women's team has already shot they know what the uh, conditions are like and they might be uh, communicating with their male counterparts and see hey, uh, how how is the wind and uh, what should I do with it and so I think uh, they might uh, have an advantage there. It might have a little bit of an edge. Those spies you were talking about. Yeah. In hiding in plain sight. <laughs> yeah, these were, yeah. Well, Athanasios uh, Kostopoulos ready to step up to the shooting line. Greece trailing 
by four at the halfway stage of this gold medal match. So Athanasios has only hit on the right so far, I think. So this might be a good moment for him to either adjust his sight or adjust his aim. Didn't look happy with that, did he? No. I think he knew that was going to go low, but he's still on the right. And he is adjusting his sight, but, yeah, well, clearly not enough. It's one of those difficult things where you don't want to move your side too much because then you'll just miss on the other side. But it's a bit of an irrational irrational thing to not do because you need to adjust your side enough as well. And So there's, there's always this dilemma, like how much do I actually move my side before it's too much? And you can uh, you can calculate it, but it's, uh, it's not really quick math on the go. Um, no, I... What... I would uh, advise people to do is to uh, just see what happens if I move my side five full turns. How far does that actually move me on the target, just in a training setting? Um, and then, you know, divide it by five and you know what one full turn does to your side setting. It's a really easy way to uh, figure out how much you sh should move your side because it's often way more than you think. Big opportunity here for Marco Bruno to extend the lead. Solid. Well, you can see the gap. Three arrows left in this end for both teams. So this is what Greece needs to do, and then they need to hope for some sort of miracle from uh, the Italian <laughs> side. <laughs> it's tricky, isn't it, when, you, when you're in a position where you're looking for a mistake from the other team? Yeah, it's, uh, it's not the place you want to be in in a match, but uh, sometimes you can't help but have those thoughts. Ten. Great finish, uh, right on the buzzer again. The Greek team using all of their 60 seconds in that final rotation. 120 seconds in total, effectively two, uh, oh, two rotations, 20 seconds per archer. Uh, but a reset here. What's going on here, Chef? Seems like a uh, faulty timing system. So right on cue, when I was talking about the time, the uh, timing system failing on the Italians. Do you have a uh, voodoo clock standing on your desk? If only, if only. <laughs> so I think I overheard the judge say the clock has broken down. So uh, I think we'll wait until that's resolved and then Italy can uh, see how much they can either keep their lead or extend their lead in going into the last end. Yeah, I mean, it could be punishing, couldn't it? Oh, there's the reset from uh, Elia Freinen, the judge stepping up to the line saying, well, hold on a minute, we just need to get that clock sorted out. So it gives me an opportunity, uh, Chef, to ask a question that I've uh, been thinking about throughout this match. Greece, not a team we see very often at the latter oh, did, stages uh, of archery tournament. They did well this uh, tournament. They uh, uh, they beat Austria with uh, Nico Wiener in the team. Uh, they uh, beat Ireland, which is in compound not necessarily 
the uh, highest ranked team ever but uh, yeah they've they've done some uh, some nice uh, matches to get to this place um, they beat a very promising team from uh, from Israel to uh, to get here Israel went on to win bronze so yeah i think uh, this tournament uh, has turned out really well for them Something to build on for the Greek team. They're guaranteed at least silver. And the way things stand at the moment, halfway through this third end, uh, it's likely that they will be walking away with silver from uh, this Grand Prix in Le Chaux. Looks like the clock has been fixed. And uh, Freynan up on the shooting line. So two tens will give them a seven point lead at this point. Uh, and then another six arrows to go after that. So you have to kind of, uh, when you're Greece at this point, or if you're Greece, uh, you have to hope that Italy starts missing every arrow or missing big on an arrow. And then you have to be on point yourself. Um, it's not impossible. It can happen, but something needs to happen something needs to change in the in the order of things right now if Riz wants to still be in this match well i think you've got that uh, fortune telling globe on your desk uh, chef it is a uh, seven point lead for uh, the italian team 172 plays 165 obviously subject to confirmation from the target judge but uh, Italy looking very strong. They ca you talked about uh, Greece ca being strong through the competition. Italy had a bye as number one seed, shooting a two, uh, sorry, uh, 20 and 90 in the ranking round of 72 arrows from each of the archers. They got a bye through the first uh, knockout phase, beat Sweden and then Great Britain. Solid score against Great Britain as well. 230 plays 220. Yeah, and uh, Greece had the second highest score in the semi-finals with 222. So I think the conditions were also not the greatest, um, which puts that 230 in an even different perspective. Yeah. Well, a little bit of a pause during uh, end number three. As uh, Freinen had to uh, come back off the shooting line with a stopped clock didn't really affect the Italians too much, shooting a nine and two tens to hold a seven point lead going into the final end. And uh, as we said earlier, Greece now, two things in mind for them, uh, shoot the best arrows you possibly can, but also they've got to combine that with hoping that uh, the Italians make a mistake. Fourth and final end of this gold medal match in the compound men's team competition. Greece trailing by seven. Shoot first. And it's Anastasios Kostopoulos on the shooting line. <laughs> so, yeah, all Greece can do right now is put pressure on Italy, but. It's very difficult to put pressure on a team that is leading by seven points with six arrows to go because most compound archers at this level know how to shoot an arrow in the gold without uh, a lot of trouble. Um, and if they just keep it in the gold, they're golden. So um, I think this is going to be a, a tough task for Greece, but uh, you never know. No. Still hanging out on the right a bit. You can see the groups on the targets have also just shifted to the right, or they have been on the right, and they are having difficulty moving them over to the middle or to the left. Oh, 
So Italy is comfortably just steaming on and doing their thing. Um, seems like uh, they're not really in trouble and they don't feel like they're in trouble. They're still leading by seven uh, with uh, three arrows to go. So unless anything major happens, they should be in the bag. A little bit of a <laughs> body English there to get that to hit the middle, but it's unfortunately just out, so. He only gets awarded nine points for that one. All Italy needs here is one eight and two sevens or two tens and a five. They can be creative about it. But I suspect they will want to go the non-creative route and uh, just shoot them in the middle. So this arrow needs to hit the target. And that will be enough to get the gold medal. And that it did. So 229 plays 221 uh, for Greece. So Italy takes away the gold medal in the European Grand Prix in Le Chal 2023. I think a lot of points were lost just by uh, simply setting their sight. Um, I do recognize the difficulty of setting your sight, especially if there's a little bit of a drift from uh, from left to right. So I'm not saying, oh, this was easy, they should have done it like this. But um, yeah, I think uh, a points could have won by uh, more aggressive uh, uh, tactics regarding their sights, uh, especially on the Greek side. But uh, Italy shot a very nice score in, uh, in, in conditions where uh, it was confusing at times and uh, they walk away with the gold. Well, what a match. Uh, it turned out a lot, uh, a lot closer than we perhaps thought in the end, uh, but like you say, uh, a bit more of an aggressive approach. There were just too many eights, weren't they, Chef? Yeah, a couple of eights uh, uh, will really uh, um, yeah, throw a stick uh, or throw a wrench in the whole situation. But uh, yeah, just their, their general group being a bit on the right rather than in the middle. I think uh, the size of the group was not necessarily the problem. Uh, it could have been smaller, but yeah, you always want your group to be a little bit smaller. Uh, just the fact that it was all on the right, I think that's what made the biggest uh, difference here. Well, we get a look over the beautiful Lily Shaw as we take a look back over the match. Uh, the Italians got off to a flyer and really didn't hold back through the match.
Yeah, that's a good point you raised there because it was especially in the beginning Greece could stay fairly close, um, but Italy just never, never stepped off the gas. They just uh, kept on going. Uh, they shot high scores even if uh, the the clock was broken. Um, they just uh, stuck with their game plan and, and just kept going. We move on now here at the European Grand Prix to the compound mixed team competition. One male, one female athlete in the lineup. And it's Great Britain again featuring on home soil. Great Britain facing Luxembourg for this compound mixed team gold medal. So here we go, Great Britain versus Luxembourg. Great Britain lining up with Ella Gibson and Kai Thomas-Prowse. Luxembourg with Maria Skolner and Gilles Seewert. The, the team from Luxembourg, uh, albeit uh, shooting against the home team, look pretty relaxed and very happy to be here, Chef. Yeah, I think they, are, uh, they genuinely are happy to be there. And... Uh... Typically, if I see them shoot, they are just having fun and, uh, and, and shooting high scores while they're at it. So, uh, yeah, I've always seen the, the Luxembourgish team as a, um, yeah, a team that really enjoys to shoot archery. Be Great Britain to shoot first. Got to buy through the uh, first round, beat the Czech Republic and Germany to make this final. Nine. Nine. Both low into the nine and that communication you were talking about earlier on, Chef, uh, must come into play for Great Britain. Yeah, for sure. Um, Ella has been on the field already. She knows what to uh, be mindful of. Maria doesn't seem to mind not being on the field before. <laughs> no. Great sighter, that first arrow. Oh. Good start from Luxembourg. Luxembourg uh, also had a bye through the first round, beat uh, Austria. Uh, sorry, they uh, beat uh, Israel and then Austria to make it through to this gold medal match. It's also interesting to notice that Ella is um, uh, giving Kai a bit of uh, encouragement while he's uh, on the line. Uh, just uh, continually talking to him, talking him through the shot. So for some people that really works, for other people it really doesn't. So uh, that's something you have to really find out about your teammate or uh, at least practice a bit. Um, or in the at, the at the least 
ask your teammate what they prefer. Um, not all of these people have shot before uh, with each other in this uh, configuration. So, um, yeah, it's something you need to really be open about and uh, talk about. Just a little bit of movement there from uh, Gilles Sewart. Yeah. Dropped low. I think he might still have hit the line. Um, so it says 38 for now in the uh, top left corner, but I think, judging by what we could see, that it was still a 9. No, oh, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> I, I bow to your superior knowledge, obviously, Chef, but I'm not so sure that that cut the line. We'll find out, I guess. X, 10, 10, 9. I think uh, I've been proven wrong again. It has happened before. Yeah, well, what can I say? Let, let's put it at... <laughs> Uh, more practice looking at arrows throughout the years. Yeah, I think you've got a bit of a head start on me there. <laughs> Although you're slowly catching up, Kareem. Bit by bit. It may Maybe a few more decades before I catch up with you, Chef. You talked about Gibson uh, playing the sort of lead role in the British team. Um, yeah. A 9 and a 10 from both of the British archers. Those two 9s at the beginning just a, a little bit low, but have they adjusted and does that 8 from uh, say what, keep them in the, in the match here? Uh, 9, but uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> it does It does prove that they, uh, they don't only shoot 10s uh, in the beginning of the match. That's really... If you start a match and your opponent starts with a perfect score, that's always like a... I wouldn't say punch in the gut because it's not that bad, but like you do get a bit intimidated or you can get a bit intimidated. Um, whereas if they miss one, it's like, ah, okay, they are giving us a little bit of uh, leeway here. So trading by a single point, Great Britain shoot first in uh, the second end. And uh, that's a great arrow from Ella Gibson. Nine. So a bit of a long hold, but I feel like that's maybe just his style of shooting. Um, or that is maybe one of the dangers of his shooting. Uh, and that's why Ella is trying to talk him through his shot and make him continuously pull through the shot. Nine. Bit of a longer hold there as well. Yeah, I agree. And I was uh, searching for an indication of why it was a bit of a longer shot, but it doesn't seem like there's too much wind. It doesn't seem like they're fight trying to fight the wind to uh, aim in the middle of the target. So maybe just, uh, you know, sometimes your shot doesn't go as fast, uh, which is okay. Uh, you have a, a certain rhythm you want to shoot in, but it's not always... You don't need to shoot an exact rhythm to hit the middle. That was a bit faster. Uh, it seemed more relaxed as well. So before, Kareem, we talked about um, how in a team you have three spots that you need to fill and uh, the beginning and the end are the, the mm. difficult ones, so to say. Um, you can see here that Ella starts off with the first arrow. And then they switch around the order so that Ella uh, closes off and anchors the, the end as well. So that just tells you that uh, Ella is the more experienced archer here. And uh, mm. um, they trust her to be okay with those kind of nerves. So a 10 to hold the lead here. Oh. They look 
looking really good, aren't they, Luxembourg? They look relaxed, calm, yeah. uh, and in control. Yeah, and uh, the last shot of uh, Gilles, it needed to be pretty fast because I don't think he had that much time left to shoot the arrow, um, which is difficult because then you need to go out of your way to shoot a quick one, uh, shoot a quick shot. But on the other hand, that does take away the the choice to shoot a, a longer hold, a longer held shot. So what it does is it also kind of gives you this space in your head where it takes away uh, a lot of choice and you just need to go for it, uh, which for some archers is just the best tactique in general because uh, if you give yourself the choice to make a really relaxed long shot, um, you need to consider it like is this a better choice or do i actually need to shoot faster or if you take all of that away uh, by just not giving an archer that much time uh, you can easily find out what works best for them and it's also something you can do in a training setting you can also say like okay i'm just going to give myself 20 seconds per arrow for the next hour or so and see how you shoot that for some archers that really uh, works wonders Yeah, fascinating insight there, Chef, into, you know, what seems like a very simple game. And, and in essence, it is a simple game. Hit the middle of the mm -hmm. target more times than your opponent. But there's so much more to the mental side of uh, the game. Luxembourg leading at the halfway stage by 78 points to 77. Two tens and X and a nine in the last end for Luxembourg. Great Britain, though, still in the hunt for this gold medal. Ella Gibson on the shooting line. And now we've talked about it before this morning, but um, if you're trailing, you start the, the end, so you can uh, really try to put some pressure on, which in some cases is difficult. If you're trailing by a lot of points, you're not going to put a lot of pressure on your opponent. But if you're trailing by only one point, then it's very... Like, it, I wouldn't say it's an advantage to trail by one point because that would be a stretch. But um, you can really, uh, you know, put some pressure on your opponent, see uh, how, how well they can cope with that. Yeah, it's an interesting point, that, isn't it? Because I think you've said on more than one occasion to me that shooting first is not such a bad thing. Well, and also it depends on the archer. Um, for me, at one point, I found out that I liked um, knowing what I should shoot and knowing how much risk I should take in a, in a windy condition, for instance. Um, so I started, um, if I was the higher ranked archer, still choosing to shoot second, uh, which is not normal. Most people uh, choose to shoot first to put that pressure on, but to me, that pressure of shooting second didn't really matter that much, so I preferred to shoot second. Again, massive uh, insight into the mental game, and it is very, very personal. Yeah, you were saying it's a it's a simple game from the outside, but in that regard, you can trivialize pretty much all sports, right? Like. If you look at football, you're just running after a ball and trying to kick it in the other side's goal. Um, or take fencing, for example. You need to poke somebody with a stick and uh, uh, try not to get poked yourself. So I think all sports have their little unique uh, nuances that you need to take into regard if you really want to get into it. Uh, and there is a lot of them in archery. And uh, I think if you talk to somebody doing a different sport, they'll tell you a lot of, a lot of them about their sport. So um, that's what I love about sports in general. You can get really into the details if you spend some time watching or doing it. I'm not biting, Chef. I'm definitely not biting. <laughs> and I certainly wasn't having a go at archery. What I was trying to demonstrate was that the concept of the, 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 the game as with all other sports, as you say, yeah. I think fencing might be a little bit different, but uh, we won't go there. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, the, the the concept of the game is simple in, in terms of there is a target to hit, as there is in football, there's a goal to hit. Um, 
but it's that 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 mental pressure standing right next to your opponent as well as getting out and and like you said you know you preferred to shoot second even if you were the higher ranked athlete and you and you also said that's unusual so it is a, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's incredibly personal We can talk about fencing another time. Let's let's concentrate on some archery. <laughs> uh, Great Britain uh, in this uh, battle here with uh, Luxembourg. Uh, Luxembourg. I mean, Maria Scholner. You, you, uh, you know, we've seen her on uh, on the international stage quite a bit. Uh, Gilles Sewert, bit of a new face to me. Um, well, he has been shooting quite well. Um, he's just been like not shooting really high level as in uh, uh, obviously I couldn't do what he's doing right now but uh, uh, yeah he hasn't just broken through in the, in the top four matches that much um, but he is a high level archer and in mixed team you just need a solid high level archer you don't necessarily need the best archer in the world um, so yeah I think uh, and, and now that they have uh, Dubravko Buden as their coach with a bunch of international experience as well. Uh, that might just give them a little bit of an edge over other teams uh, in, in that regard as well. Well, they've certainly got the edge here, haven't they, over Great Britain. Uh, Great Britain in that uh, tricky position of having to shoot the best arrows they can and hoping for a bit of a mistake. Two tens yeah. to start the final end for Gibson and Thomas Pras. Now we'll see how Luxembourg and Skolna and Sewa handle the pressure of leading. Quite well, I'd say. That's the uh, sixth 10 in a row from the uh, Luxembourg team. Actually... I'll correct that. That's the seventh ten in a row, but uh, followed up there. Oops. That didn't look like that bad of a shot to me, but obviously it's different if you're holding the bow and feeling what you're actually doing. Right on the uh, buzzer again for 154 from Great Britain. This is very much in the hands of Skolna and Sewert now. Well, bang on the line for another 10 and uh, provisionally a uh, 157. And well, there you can see the celebrations. It was a clear win and they just started so well. Yeah, started well, had a good middle and uh, had a good ending. So, uh, yeah, what more do you want in an archery match? Number one, we have X, 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 A. Well, a great performance from uh, Maria Skolna and Gilles Sewert from Luxembourg. The coach pretty happy with the work they've done here at the first leg of the European Grand Prix. Uh, Luxembourg taking the mixed team compound gold medal against the host nation Great Britain, who will collect the silver medal. Germany with the bronze will be on the podium a little bit later on but there is confirmation Maria Skolna and Gilles Siewert from Luxembourg taking gold here in Lillishaw
So there we have it. Skolna and uh, Seywert from Luxembourg taking out uh, Gibson and Thomas Prowse from Great Britain. A brilliant start from uh, the Luxembourg pair. Uh, they, uh, Chef, we talked about this at the beginning. They, they, they looked really relaxed and happy and shooting for fun, I think you said. Yeah, well, obviously they were also shooting to win. Uh, but uh, it's, it seemed like they were just mostly enjoying themselves on the on the line and uh, yeah, having fun in the process of winning. So I think they have a good mindset going on there. They certainly do. And uh, gold medal picked up. Uh, if you look at the raw score with some ease, but uh, they really shot well right from the very start. Uh, coach delighted with the efforts of uh, Maria Skolna and Jill Siewert. And uh, coming up very shortly, we'll see these two on top of the podium. And we'll have the medal ceremonies for all of the compound team competitions. gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the compound women team.
So time now for the medal ceremonies for the compound team competitions. We start with the compound women's team medal ceremony. So the bronze medal goes to the Netherlands in the compound women's team competition. Sandalat, Aurora Janssen and Martin Stas Kovenberg. They beat Germany in the bronze medal playoff, 216 to 212. The Netherlands only just lost out to Italy in the semi-finals in a shoot-off. Well, they picked themselves up to collect the bronze medal. Silver medal, Italy. There was just one point in it in the final. But the Italians came out in second place, collecting the silver medal. Hilda Gibson presenting those medals. Paola Natali, Sarah Rett, and uh, Marcella Tonioli lining up for the Italian team. Well, they did it at the first time of asking on home soil. Ella Gibson there. Receiving the medals along with uh, Elizabeth Foster and Jessica Stretton in the middle. Yes, Easter bunnies for the uh, athletes. Nice way to celebrate Easter Sunday, if that's your thing. Time now for the British National Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the National Anthem of Great Britain. So there we have it, Great Britain on top of the podium in the compound women's team competition, beating Italy in the final. The Netherlands collecting the bronze medal. Time for the photo op now, coming up very shortly. We'll have the medal ceremony for the compound men's team competition.
So time now for the compound men's team medal ceremony. Medals will be presented by World Archery Europe Executive Board Member, Arno Strivis. Kids will be presented by Archery GP Board Member, Yenda Oji. Bronze medal, Israel. The bronze medal going to Israel. Paz Kami. Paz Kami. Part of a very young lineup before the team from Israel. Iftash Hadar in the middle there. And it Shamai Romyon, the uh, third member of that team. Silver medal, Greece. Great performance from Greece here in this competition. Ranked sixth after the ranking round, beating Ireland, Austria and Israel before losing out to a strong Italian team who were the number one seeds after the ranking round. Konstantinos Drakiotis, Anthan Nasios Kostopoulos and Stavros Kometas collecting the silver medal here at the first leg of the European Grand Prix in Lillishaw. They were number one seeds for a reason. They were very, very strong through the uh, final against Greece. Gold for the Italians. Marco Bruno, Elia Freinen and Michael Godano.
gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. A well, fantastic performance in the Compound men's team competition. The Italians taking gold from a promising looking Greek team, Israel, with the bronze medal. One more medal ceremony to come here in the Le Chol before we head back to the range. And that's the uh, Compound mixed team medal ceremony. Straight after that, we will be turning our attention to the compound individual medal matches bronze and gold for both the women and the men coming up straight after the next medal ceremony So time now for the victory ceremony for the compound mixed team competition here in Lillishaw, European Grand Prix first leg. Germany collecting the bronze medal. They beat Austria in the playoff. Katarina Raab and Florian Grafsman. Lunchtime chocolate treat for all the Germans. Silver medal, Great Britain. The host nation picking up the silver medal. Just weren't quite at the races in the gold medal match, gotta say. But uh, silver medal, not bad work. Ella Gibson and Kai Thomas Prowse collecting an international medal on the world stage on home soil. The champions of the compound mixed team competition, Luxembourg. Very impressive, got to say. Maria Skolna and Gilles Seywert had fun in the process of taking the gold medal and still having fun on top of the podium. And uh, they will get their chocolate bunnies and then get to celebrate with their national anthem.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Luxembourg. Gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. Well, there we have it. Germany with bronze, Great Britain with the silver, Luxembourg taking gold in the compound mixed team competition. And it's not often you hear the uh, Luxembourg national anthem. Skolna and Sewa joining Luxembourg greats of sport like Nicholas France, Charlie Gaulle. Uh, Elsie Jacobs on the top of the podium for their country. A proud moment for them both. Coming up next, we're going to turn our attention to the compound individual bronze and gold medal matches for the women and then the men. First up, in the next part of our coverage, we'll see Lissel Yatma from Estonia take on Andrea Robles of the Philippines in the compound women's bronze medal match. I'll be coming up very shortly. gentlemen please welcome the athletes for the compound women bronze medal match well there you have it time now for the individual competitions to come to their conclusion here in lily short in the compound division we start with the compound women's bronze medal match coaches and judge already out 
it's time to welcome the athletes to the range. So there we go, the athletes are out. 23-year-old uh, Liselle Yatma on the left on target number one. It's world number four from Estonia. Shot a 700 in the ranking round to be ranked first. Goes up against Archery Dream Club's Andrea Robles. Uh, understand she's from the Philippines and ranked 197th in the world. Chef, surely this has got Liselle Yatma written all over it. It does. On the other hand, uh, Andrea apparently uh, found it worthwhile to fly all the way to Europe from the Philippines to shoot this tournament, so she must be in good shape if she is willing to do that. Nine. So again, we're looking for a cumulative score here. Yatma starting with a, a nine. I'll shoot alternatively. Oh, now that's close. Is it a cutter? Is it a line cutter, Chef? I think so, but uh, I'm I'm starting to get more and more afraid of making line calls because of your uh, <laughs> judging eyes. <laughs> that one is. That's a bit of a hiccup, I'd say. It's not too far out. Nine. A little bit of a dip. A dip meaning uh, her uh, bow hand kind of dropped right before the release went off, and you could see that she had a reaction to it. Eight. Ooh. A little bit of movement there from the pair of them uh, in that uh, first end. Conditions, but perhaps a tiny bit windier at the shooting line. Yeah, but not much. It doesn't seem like it, at least. Uh, sometimes there's more wind than uh, is visible with the naked eye, but uh, I mean, it, it looks quite calm there. You can see Liesel's hair is just fluttering a little bit, but nothing too crazy. So, a nerves a factor here, do you think? Yeah, maybe. Um, so, Liesel obviously uh, has cemented her place in the top of the world scene, um, which puts some pressure on your shoulders. If you're going into a competition uh, on a continental level, you kind of want to show that you're at a world level. So, that puts some pressure on you. Um, I'm sure Andrea has, uh, has added pressure for just coming over for a competition that far from home. Um, so, yeah, it might be nerves. Well, 26 plays uh, 28. Archery Dream Club's Robles from the Philippines will shoot first in the second end. But there's uh, a little bit in this for sure. Both athletes um, showing but there's uh, well, they're trying to handle the nerves or the conditions out here in the Le Shore. Nine. All of her arrows are below the center line now, so I think it would be advisable to move her side a bit. Just a bit of movement there from Yatma. Yeah. 
There you go. And again, dropping just out of the gold. Not really what you want to do against the number four of the world, but... Ten. So a bit of a slow start, but... Uh, Liselle seems to be finding the middle at least closer and closer to it. Um, I think Andrea uh, needs to pick up the pace if she wants to uh, stay in this match. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Just for point of fact, uh, that uh, arrow was marked up in the first end for Robles, 28-27 uh, after the first, but uh, as you say, Chef, uh, Lissel Yatma showing her experience and just opening that lead up by uh, two points after uh, the first two ends. Uh, looking pretty solid. It's a family affair, isn't it, in Estonia? Yeah, it is. Uh, her mom is uh, behind her coaching her. And then uh, she has a, a little brother, I think. I think it's a little brother, um, who is also at a very high level of shooting. So they do uh, tend to go out with the whole family, yeah. Yeah, Robin Yatma, as uh, you're alluding to. Yeah. They team up for mixed team competitions. I wonder if they teamed up here. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. Start of the third. So, not low anymore, which is good. Lizelle going low into the nine. And you're right, uh, Chef. Brother Robin is uh, a year younger. He is the little brother. And uh, it's Marika <laughs> in the box coaching uh, her daughter. Another line call there for uh, Andrea. Yeah, I think I'll leave this one to the judges. It's for <laughs> me. It's too close to call right now. So the interesting difference here is that uh, Liselle has a group in the middle and then a group that's slightly low, whereas Andrea mostly is low, and then she'll also have a bit of spray uh, over the rest of the gold. So there's a, a bit of a difference there in, the, in group size, but also the shape of the group. Um, to me, that would indicate that Liselle is more comfortable at the moment. She's just uh, shooting good arrows and then making a mistake every once in a while, where Andrea might be just a bit more nervous and, and struggling to find her shot in uh, the general sense. Yeah, and if you look at the uh, performance trajectory, it's the 28, 28 and 29 from Yatma. Two 27s with uh, tens and eights in the first two ends for Robles. A 27 with three nines, subject to confirmation, of course, in the third end. I think it has a chance to hit the line, but I'd, I wouldn't be able to tell you if it actually did before the judge tells us. No, even I didn't ask you about that one. It was uh, just a little bit too close. And the angles, the angles can play... Uh, 
tricks on you as well, can't they? The, and the, the light, of course, the shadows that the arrows form in the target. Uh, so we tick up to uh, midday, the highest point of the sun in the sky. We're still actually waiting for that confirmation of the score, but uh, clearly Robles is behind there. It was marked up to a 10. So an 82 for uh, Robles. I think her arrow fell off her wrist when she pulled back her bow, so she has like five seconds left now. Nine. And again a low nine, but I don't see any moving of the sight. Unless she's doing it when we're not watching, which is a possibility. X10. X10. So just you can see. After they shoot, we get a nice view on their target. You can see the double group here that I was talking about. One group in the X or 10, and then a group in the low 9. And then looking at Andrea's target, you can see that it's kind of almost pear-shaped, where she has a couple 10s, and then she goes low most of the time. She just nods, like, okay, it makes sense that it's low, but uh, even if you're consistently shooting bad shots and hitting low, you want to, in a, a place like this, in the final, you want to choose to shoot bad shots in the middle, right? So you adjust your sight. Ten. Perfect for uh, Lissel Yatma for a 115. So uh, this is the intriguing thing, I think, for, for, for most people that aren't archers and don't shoot as regularly as you do or have done in the past, Chef you're all perfectionist it's not just getting the 10 it's also shooting a, an arrow that you're happy with right yeah in in training setting yes but i think if you get to the point <clears throat> where you're in a gold medal match like andrea and Lizelle right now um you kind of don't want to think about okay i want to shoot perfect shots or at least that was not my mental process my mental process was whatever it takes this arrow needs to go in the middle um if that means I shoot a bad shot, but it still hits the middle, that's mission success. So, <laughs> um, it, yeah, for me, I would say, even if she is acknowledging like, okay, this arrow went low in the nine because I did this or that, um, and she's doing that consistently, then I would still adjust my sight and just shoot mm. those bad arrows and hit the middle anyways, because now she's just throwing away score by having a group that's low in the nine. Yeah, and again, I am not her coach. No, but it is an interesting point that, uh, like you say, in training the idea is perfection, but on the uh, in a in a medal match, it's just about getting the the biggest score at the end. In in the case of compound archery, big gap here as we go into the uh, final end. Three arrows left for each archer. Robles trailing by five. These all really has seem to found a groove now. Yeah, seventh uh, ten in a row for her. Nine. Making that adjustment. Ten. Good finish, good strong finish. I'd be interested to see uh, some uh, analytics on uh, if she would have moved her group, how many points would she have shot uh, if it were in the middle. There's a, there's an yes. app that can do that, but I uh, yeah. don't want to 
<laughs> I'm sure there is. Uh, let's not advertise anything just yet, though. Uh, exactly. Great win for uh, Lissel Yatmar. 145 uh, to finish off there out of uh, a possible 150. Uh, very strong from the start. Uh, went with ranking and experience. Uh, not on the podium for Archery Dream Club's uh, Andrea Robles from the Philippines, uh, but a good performance or a good opportunity and experience here to soak up uh, the podium range. But we're going to see Lissel Yatmar on the podium a little bit later on. So time very shortly to find out who's going to take gold and silver. The compound women's individual final coming up. Maria Schollner from Luxembourg taking on Ella Gibson from Great Britain. World number one against world number 13. So confirmation that uh, Lissel Yatmar lived up to the expectation collecting the bronze medal here in Lillishaw, the first leg of the European Grand Prix in the compound women's individual competition. It's time to find out who's going to take gold here in the compound of women's individual competition here in Lillishaw at the first leg of the European Grand Prix. Time to meet the contenders. So there we have it on target number one, Maria Schollner from Luxembourg, 25 years old, world number 13, uh, taking on world number one, Ella Gibson from Great Britain. Now, if you just went by ranking, you'd have to favour Ella Gibson, but we've seen Maria Schollner perform so well in the mixed team competition. She is going to be up for this challenge and she will shoot first in this compound women's individual final. It's an 
So far, matching each other arrow by arrow, and it doesn't seem like they're uh, planning on giving each other just an inch of uh, leeway. High quality start here in this uh, compound women's gold medal match. Skolna carrying on the form that she showed in the uh, mixed team competition, Chef. Yeah, the mixed team competition in which she was also shooting against Ella Gibson uh, together with her teammate and against Ella's teammate. So they have uh, shot against each other earlier today and they have uh, got a taste of the, the venue already. So. Uh, they, uh, they don't have anything to, to hide anymore, sort of. They certainly don't. It gives us a tiny little bit of a chance to talk about this uh, bid for world archery getting compound into the Olympic Games. Uh, that's a, that's a potentially a massive moment for both of these athletes. Yeah, especially uh, uh, looking at that it's getting closer and closer because uh, they put in the bid for LA. Uh, which is in five years already, so uh, they're almost getting into that, you know, Olympic cycle that uh, us recurve archers are used to. So, uh, yeah, I th I'm sure they will uh, uh, hope for it, and uh, it will be interesting to see if uh, if it actually comes through. Yeah, and they've they've put up the the biggest possible bid for it in terms of uh, showing a difference between recurve and compound. Uh, the compound bid is for indoor archery on a much shorter range here though going for gold in Lillishaw Skolna and Gibson tied at 29 apiece Good recovery. Now she just has to stick as close to Ella as possible until the end, I guess. Both dropping low over the last couple of arrows. Let's see how Gibson responds here. Yep. So, Chef, it's only two points, but uh, it feels like a bigger swing than two points. Yeah, on the other hand, looking at um, Ella's second arrow, there was also a bit of a, a bit of a hiccup, a bit of a stumble maybe. So that showed some vulnerability to uh, Maria as well. So she might be like, okay, okay, she can also miss arrows and we can, uh, we can see how far we can get here. So obviously Maria is in this underdog role uh, in, in this case, um, where she's shooting against... Uh, is it still the world, world number one, or? Yeah, she's still world number yeah. one. So, uh, yeah, you can only in, in Ella's shoes right now. You can only lose this match, or you can do what is expected of you. Whereas Maria can only win this match because she's shooting against a world number one. That's at least one way to look at it. 
Yeah. Incredible rise through the ranks uh, over the last 18 months for Ella Gibson. Yeah. Trying to maintain her composure there, Skolnup. So two points in this as we go into end number three. Skolna trailing 56 to 58. So reassuring words from the coach saying like yes it's a nine but it's okay. little bit more wind on the line right now than uh, there was before. It's still not crazy wind, it's not like they're be being blown around, but sometimes you'll see that piece of string on the stabilizer of Ally just wavering around a bit more. Yeah, it's a good point there, because there is a little bit of movement, and what's curious to me is it looks like Gibson is almost... I don't know whether it's part of a process, but she's kind of moving her bow hand up and down when she's at full draw. It's only, we're talking millimetres here, mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like uh, Skolna's going left, right. So it's sort of lateral versus uh, vertical in comparison yeah, it to also, full draw. It also has to do with technique a little bit, where um, Ella is more of a slightly leaning back uh, type, uh, whereas Maria is more straight up kind of so it's uh they have different styles different techniques um and that will result in different aiming patterns as well so where you put your balance on your feet and where you put your shoulders in regards to your hips and feet uh, that will all have effect on how your aiming pattern is and what's difficult or what's what's often overlooked is that aiming is actually a movement you these archers are not aiming in the middle and just staying in the middle with their side pin. Um, they'll also, they'll always drift a bit and, and typically uh, it'll be like maybe like in the uh, figure of eight or it'll go like up and down but not left or right and it's very personal and obviously you want to have the aiming pattern to be calm and, and small so you can stay close to the middle. Um, uh, prefer, prefer, sorry, preferably it will just be at least calm. It will not be twitchy because that's difficult to um, take into account. But as long as it's just moving a little bit and not uh, moving a lot, then you're fine. It's a ten. Oh. Okay. Just dropping a little low there, Skolner, at the start of uh, the fourth. Ten. 
Get a good view of the uh, spirit level there. Oh, I just don't want to, as you call it, cant the bow, turn it sort of leaning left or right. Nine. Yeah, that one you could see that she knew that was going to go to the right and maybe also go down or go low. Um, and you could see it or recognize it by the fact that she tried to throw her bow left and up a bit. Um, the thing is, it's the first part of fixing the problem is recognizing uh, that your sight was not in the middle. But then the second part is actually fixing it. And I think that's a bit late in uh, finals like this. And, and she'll know that Maria has uh, experience in these kind of situations. Um, but four points um, to overcome in one end to go uh, against the world number one is highly unlikely. But uh, she will probably do everything in her, in her power at least to uh, make it happen. Yeah, I said uh, after the uh, second end that that two-point swing felt a bit more than that. And you were quite right in saying that Gibson's uh, second arrow was a, a little bit dodgy in that uh, second end. But Gibson has slowly but surely just pulled away, and that fourth end uh, was a big turning point. So with those scores confirmed, and we're trailing Ella by four points <laughs> And we're back in the situation where you can put pressure on your opponent if you're shooting first, but it's difficult to put pressure on an opponent that's so far ahead. Uh, and, and she'll know that all she needs to do is shoot everything in the gold and she'll be good. Uh, which, for Ella, shooting everything in the gold is probably a walk in the park. Yeah, perfect 30 for her, two tens and an X in the uh, last end, but Skolna still in this match, shooting first in end number five. Ten. Nice job. Ten. Just. Yeah, yeah, she's doing exactly what she needs to do. Just uh, shoot strong shots and, and hope that Ella has a slip up. But yeah, like I said, there's a reason she's the number one in the world right now. Look to 10 to me for her first perfect and a 143 uh, but as you can see there's room for error here. Nine. Gibson going for gold and getting gold. It was a close one in the end and uh, Skolna closed the gap in the final and fifth end but uh, Gibson just too strong put it in the bag in the fourth set and then sealed that bag up in the fifth to take gold in the compound women's individual competition here in Lillishaw. Well, there's uh, an example of the professionalism of Ella Gibson, the world number one, checking her arrows, even though the competition is done and dusted for her. No more shooting. She was just still checking the knocks at the end of her arrow. It's been a great tournament for Maria Skolna here. A gold in the mixed team, silver in the compound women's individual, but gold for Ella Gibson for Great Britain on home soil. Donna, the silver medal in the compound women individual event. <laughs>
very, very happily chatting to each other there on the Pardons Field. And ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our silver and gold medalists, Maria Stolak and Helen Gibson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the coaches and the judge to the field of play. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes for the compound men individual bronze medal match. The last of the compound action coming up right now here in Lillishaw at the first leg of the European Grand Prix. It's time to sort out the medals in the compound men's individual tournament. First up, the bronze medal match. Coaches and judge out. And again, we go down to the field of play to introduce the contenders for this bronze medal. On target one, representing Italy, Marco Bruno. Target two, representing Greece, Dimitrios Rakiotis. The line judge for this match, David Ostret. So the lineup for the compound men's bronze individual medal match sees 31 year old Marco Bruno from Italy ranked 40th in the world taking on the 21 year old Greek archer who's number 110 in the world Konstantinos Drakiotis it's been a fine compound competition for Greece And they cap it off with a bronze medal. First up, though, Marco Bruno from Italy. X10. Chef, it looks a little bit like the wind has picked up. You, you kind of alluded to that earlier on. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be too much of a bother on the uh, bow arm. Uh, it doesn't seem like it, they're being blown around too much, but it can just be, you know, an, an annoying little wind that will just get you out of the middle while aiming. Ten. Nine, 
It's nice to start off with a perfect score. You're calling that, are you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> and a very good recovery from that first arrow. It's not always easy to start off a match with, uh, you know, let's just say a bad shot. Um, it, obviously, he hits an eight ring on 50 meters, and it's difficult to call that a bad shot. But in this setting, it is. Um, but then to mentally make that step of okay, I shot an eight, that's okay, uh, and then going for it and, and shooting two tens to back it up, that's yeah, that's good. That's a good mental process. Yeah, it was just that the the vertical part of the aim was the the, the problem, wasn't it, for uh, yeah. Drachiotis? Because they they all seemed to be in in a neat line going up and down. Yeah, it looked like it. Yeah, and he could, there was a big reaction to the shot as well, so you knew that was not the greatest shot ever, but. I've mentioned it before today, it, it doesn't always matter if the shots are great as long as the result is. And uh, yeah, that was the case uh, uh, with the last shots that he did. So 28 plays 30. Thrakiotis trailing by two. It's going to shoot first in end number two. Looks like he found the middle of the target in the second two arrows of the first end. Can he stay there? He has a bit of a wild shot um, compared to the, his opponents. Ooh. Nine. <laughs> Held on to that for a very long time. Yeah. So these compound bows do have let off, so you're not holding the complete draw weight the whole time. Um, let off meaning you pull back your bow, um, and then typically 60 to 80 percent of the uh, draw weight is gone uh, by the time you were all the way pulled back because of the nature of the. Uh, Asymmetrical cams. But still, you don't want to be holding your bow for 15 seconds. <laughs> no. So provisionally maintaining that uh, two-point lead, but there was a a long hold in the middle arrow there for uh, Marco Bruno from Italy. Um, perhaps a little bit of tension coming into the shot? Yeah, it seems like he is uh, struggling with his shot rhythm in any case, or there must be at least a reason for his coach to start counting down at 15 seconds already. Um, typically, you wouldn't do that as a coach uh, unless um, somebody asks you to do it. So I think he uh, he might have issues with just shooting in a short amount of time, and that's why um, his coach is aiding him with it. So clearly, uh, speaking Italian is part of your vast array of talents, chef. Well, I mean. The art of uh, deduction, I guess, uh, just uh, looking at context and... Uh, <laughs> hey, you could have I fooled know, me then, told me you speak fluent Italian. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the kind to, to fool people with uh, fake knowledge. Well, that second arrow did go for a measure for Konstantinos Drakiotis.
we both had it down as a nine. And it was confirmed as a nine as Dracotis starts end number three. So apart from the first arrow, he actually has a really good group. Uh, maybe in his case, I'd uh, move his side a couple clicks, but nothing too severe. Um, it's just that that eight, the first arrow, is a bit of a a bit of a pickle. Well, Dracotis is keeping the pressure on 210 so far in the, this end. And there's the third for a perfect, just when he needed it. Gets matched with his perfect score, so he doesn't really make up any ground that he lost before. And that can be a very difficult place to be in uh, when you're finally getting your groove again and uh, you shoot your perfect score that you've been longing to shoot before and then your opponent just matches it as if it's nothing it's like okay what what can I do then because there's not much you can do you mentioned uh, the Italian coach counting down from 15 as we saw in that final arrow as well so you're saying it's not normal what would be the reasons that that that, that count starts so early um, so it might be that like I said before he might be uncomfortable in a um, shorter time span because typically in the qualification round for instance you get 30 seconds per arrow rather than um, 20 and also in the elimination rounds you get 30 seconds per arrow um, now you only get 20 so you, you're a bit you know you have less time to shoot your uh, shot um, if you're not comfortable with that, it might be nice to know where you are in your, like in, in the clock, um, so that you can anticipate on, okay, I have to speed up my shot a bit. Uh, and if you know that in time, uh, let's say he starts counting at five, but uh, the archer thinks like, oh, I still have eight or nine seconds left. Yeah. And you suddenly have to speed up quite a lot. Whereas if you know where you are at all times, then you can uh, anticipate on it a bit better. Just a single point in this, as it's ten number four in a row for Dracotis. Number five in a row for Bruno. Look to just pull that one a little bit, but it stayed inside the ten ring. Yeah, he has a tendency to do that, so I don't know if he, uh, if he's not great at aiming in the middle, or if he feels something going on with his shot and thinks like, oh, this is what I need to do. There's mostly a lot of tension in his technique. He's uh, there is a lot of muscle being used rather than uh, letting the shot happen and uh, just waiting for it to go off. He's actively making the shot happen. Well, they both follow each other into the lower part of the gold, both shooting nines with the last arrow, so keeping it uh, to just a point. And now, Chef, we come back to this situation of uh, the archer trailing by one, shooting first. Yeah. As a, one could call it an advantage, because they, they can put the pressure on. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, like I said before, calling it a, 
advantage is a little bit of a stretch maybe but um yeah you can definitely make it into make it into an advantage rather than a deficit so um you're trailing but you really still have a good chance if you can put some pressure on your opponent I definitely think this one's not done yet, is it? It's not. It's yes, you'd prefer to be in Marco Bruno's shoes and have that one-point lead, but I think there's still more in this, isn't there? Yeah, anything can still happen. Some really cool shots here. Bronze medal up for grabs here. Bruno versus uh, Drakiotis, Italy versus Greece. Greek athlete trailing by a single point, three arrows per archer to go. Now, there is absolutely nothing in this. Oh, that is the opening that he needed. <sighs> you could see just a little bit of loss of tension in his uh, shot right before the release went off. Good group, but high and right. Is this going to be settled in the regulation ends? Didn't look happy with that, but it looks like it's gone in the 10. So now a 10 required to stay in the match. He gets that 10. It's a 145 plays 145. I'm going to say it again provisionally. We just have to wait for confirmation. It didn't look like there was anything suspicious there in terms of a measure. Uh, and it looks like we may be in a shoot off here. Figured this one had a little bit more in it, Chef. Yeah. I always love a good shoot off. Well, Marco Bruno led right the way through here, was forced into shooting a 10 to stay in the, the match for the bronze medal. And he's going to have to dig into his utility belt here because it looks like we are going to have a shoot off. One arrow per archer to decide who'll take bronze here in Lillishaw. Drakiotis didn't look happy, or was that his form of celebration, shooting a 10 with his last arrow to force the shoot off? Uh, targets have been cleaned, so fresh targets have been put up in case we go to a measure. It's one arrow per archer, closest to the middle, will take the bronze medal, and it will be Marco Bruno from Italy to shoot first. This is very long. Yeah, so that, that close to the buzzer. It was definitely uh, affected by some wind on the bow. You could see him being blown around. This is a big one. 
That's gone into the nine and left. Oh. Do you have a feel for this one, Chef? Uh, I think the Italian, but I, I don't quite remember where his was exactly. They both shot nines. That's uh, Drakiotis' left arrow. Uh, the, the calipers are coming out for the measure. Does look closer, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And uh, you can see Marco Morello, the teammate of uh, Bruno. He uh, also pointed and said, "Yeah." <laughs> Well, there is confirmation that uh, Marco Bruno from Italy has taken the bronze medal here in Lilla Shaw in a measured shoot off. Konstantinos Strakiotis had a chance of robbing the gold, leveling up in the final set, but uh, in the shoot off, he was just a fraction further away from the center of the target. Has to settle for fourth place, but. Uh, a bat signal is flying high tonight for Marco Bruno as he collects bronze in the compound men's individual. Time to go for gold here in Lillishaw in the compound men's individual competition. Coaches and judge are out. And here come the athletes. The contenders for the compound men's gold medal match, Shemai Yamrom from Israel, just 18 years old, the world number 60, taking on the world number 13 from Slovakia, Joseph Posansky, who's uh, 46 years young, and sporting a, a little bit of a hairier beard than uh, he had last season. Maybe it's his uh, off-season beard and he's uh, only now getting back into the season. Great start. Just looking at. Um, oh, 
sorry, <laughs> looking at uh, the coaches' boxes, uh, Richard Priestman is in the coaching box of Shamai, and arguably, or I think without a doubt, he has spent more time here in Lillish Hall than uh, both of the athletes combined, <laughs> because he was uh, previously the coach of Great Britain. So he must know the 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 circumstances here really well, and he must have had, had some insight to uh, how to uh, shoot high scores in uh, this location. Yeah, and it, it's an interesting point that uh, the experience obviously for Priestman has here, but uh, this uh, Israeli team are incredibly young, aren't they? They're they're, they're, they're all, all three competing in the uh, compound team competition. Priestman's having a big effect. Yeah, I think uh, they're really focusing on developing talent rather than uh, just uh, keeping the high-level archers in the team and not focusing on the rest, uh, which on the long term I think is a very good tactique. So a perfect from uh, Shamai Yamrom from Israel. There is Priestman on the right with his sunglasses on. It looks like a young team in general, right? Looks very young indeed. But relaxed and confident. It's only one point. So still plenty to play for. And uh, let's face it, Bozanski has bags of experience he will have been in this position many times before he's going to shoot first in end number two trailing by that single point So Joseph is uh, slightly older than uh, Shamai is, <laughs> but uh, I think looking at statistics, purely statistics, uh, the the upwards line or the upwards uh, graph that Shamai is showing in his uh, performances is, yeah, it's it's very impressive, and I think it can only go up from there almost. Um, he shot a 710 last year, which is like for some compound archers or for a lot of compound archers actually, breaking the 700 barrier is a big thing, and 710 is no easy feat. So he definitely showed that he has the potential to uh, shoot really high scores and and to you know do really good things. Um, but like you said, Joseph has a lot of experience on the finals venue. He has a lot of experience on just the competition field in general. Um, and he will not let this be a walk over, I don't believe. Yeah, that 7-10 shot by uh, Shamai Yomram last year. Ne he nearly matched it here. Got a 7.06 in the ranking round. Came through that ranking round first uh, yeah. in Lillishaw. 6.95 uh, was Joseph Basansky's effort in the ranking round to be ranked 7th. But so that where solid Joseph? start. I was just going to say, Chef, that solid start from Yamrom uh, is continuing here, isn't it? Uh, he's opened that up at the lead to two points now. Yep. Where Joseph typically thrives is uh, in windy situations, in windy conditions. Uh, he has a very heavy bow in terms of mass weight. Um, it might not look like it now, but I think he has extra heavy weights on him, made out of tungsten steel rather than normal steel. Um, and also he shoots uh, trigger release most of the time, which 
if you're good at it, you can really use it to your advantage when it's windy. Yeah, some really good stuff here from Joseph. He's uh, doing all he can to get back into this match. Not that he was out of it with a two-point deficit, but more so shooting against somebody who has the capability of shooting very high scores. You don't want to trail too far. Ten. Lovely end for Joseph Bozanski for an 87. Perfect 30 for him. Ooh, yeah, Ooh. that was a bit of a... Almost looks like he relaxed his fingers a bit right before the release went off. Um, at first I was wondering, did I see that correctly? And then I saw the arrow hit and I was like, okay, it makes sense that it hit there. That, um, yeah, there was just a bit of a... Bit of a hiccup. I don't know how to better explain it than that. Big swing though, uh, three point uh, difference uh, or three point swing in that one. Bozanski now leading by one. Chef, we talked about shooting uh, over 700 being good in the ranking round. Just just for, for those that perhaps don't know, what, what is a ranking round? How does it work? So a ranking round consists of 72 arrows. Uh, for compound archers, this is a shot at 50 meters on uh, 80 centimeter target so 80 centimeters meaning if it were a full target it would have been 80 centimeters from the edge of the one to the edge of the one um, or you could say the 10 ring is eight centimeters across uh, that's also what they're shooting at right now um, they shoot end of ends of six uh, and they uh, they are just cumulative so they shoot 12 ends of six highest score gets the highest rank so I'm I'm not great at maths, but 72 arrows means the maximum possible is 720. 720, yeah. <laughs> so 706 for uh, Yamrom, 695 for Bazanski, but Bazanski's turned this one around in end number three. He leads by a single point, so it will be Yamrom to shoot first in the fourth. Good recovery after that last arrow of the last end. You can see his uh, sleeve of his shirt wavering a bit in the wind and I think he might have just slowly drifted off middle and then the release went off at the wrong time. Now this is exciting. Now we go into the last end with a tight score so whoever has a better end in himself will win the gold it's a real up and down one this one shamron leading out from the start being pegged back and overtaken by bozanski in the third end and then in the fourth a 29 plays 30, very, very high quality. Just three arrows left per archer to decide who's going to take gold here in Lushaw. Yeah, so we've gone through four ends, and now we're back at zero, basically. 
is that how you look at it you know when you were shooting do you just get to this final end and go well that's it it's zero zero um pretty much but that was also that was always my uh idea to try and keep it as simple as possible and uh, saying to myself it doesn't really matter where in the match i am i want to shoot the middle anyways so rather than thinking of uh, I need to really shoot well this end because it's the last end or whatever, um, just try to shoot well all of the ends. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done, I think. That is very correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go into the fifth and final end here. Bazanski versus Yamrong, all square. Little bit of a grimace on the face of Priestman in the background there, the coach for Israel. And the quality remains very high indeed. Now the door is open. A 10 for Bozanski now means gold in Lillashaw. And he's put it right in the middle for his second perfect of the match. And a 146. There's nothing Shamron can do. Perhaps the hardest arrow to shoot in a competition. Ten. Gets it into the 10. You can't finish better than that. A 145 plays 146. And in the end... The experience of Joseph Bozanski from Slovakia played out, and he's taken gold here at the first leg of the European Grand Prix. It's silver for the 18-year-old promising youngster, Shamai Yamrom from Israel. Good match to finish the compound action, Chef. Yeah, that was a good match. It was uh, exciting till the end, and uh, some uh, back and forth between them. And uh, seeing as uh, Chamai is only 18 years old, I think we uh, we are yet to see more from him. We certainly are, but confirmation that uh, Joseph Bozanski from Slovakia has taken the gold medal here in Lillashaw, beating Chamai Yamron from Israel by a single point. So there we have it, compound men's medals sorted out. Uh, Bozanski from Slovakia taking gold from Yamron of Israel. Bruno from Italy taking the bronze medal in a shoot-off. Coming up uh, very soon, we will have the medal ceremonies for the men's and women's individual compound competition. We'll then be taking a very short break, a very short break indeed, because... Uh, just a little after 2 p.m. local time, that's 3 p.m. Central European time, we'll turn our attention to the recurve conclusion of the competition here in Lillishaw.
Well, a quick look back over that men's competition. Won by Joseph Bozanski from Slovakia. You, uh, Shamal Yevron taking still that. And here's Ella, Ella Gibson. To the bag and on the home turf as well. Tell me, what's running through your head right now? It feels amazing to start the season like this. You know, I had some really tricky matches to get out here. So I'm just really glad I managed to pull it through and to get my team up here as well. You know, with a mixed team silver and a team gold, it's an amazing start for the season. I think it really shows what we're all going to be capable of. Definitely, yeah. And so you gained yourself a little bit of a lead there in the second end against Maria and built on it from there. Was that a, a bit of a turning point for you in the match? Did you feel, yeah, I've got this in the bag, I'm really confident now and I know I can go and get this win in the bag? Yeah, definitely. I think it was actually on the third end I felt like it turned because we repeatedly did a, she shot a nine on the first hour, I shot a ten, she shot ten and then I shot a nine. So I know the end, I think it was the third or maybe the fourth, when I then repeated it with a ten, I knew that I would be getting in a roll and that I was going to end the dropping points there and get nice and I knew I was going to win the match at that point. Perfect. And last season for you, that was a career highlight. It's been the best year so far for you. And this year, starting off with a win, how do you feel and how is that going to help you set up for this season? I think it really gives me a good idea of where I am at the moment and what I need to do, what I need to work on moving forward. You know, we have Antalya in a week, so it's a great confidence boost to know my kit's working good. I've got my RFP right because I've been toying with that a lot the last few weeks. And now I can just get everything to be perfect going into more of the outdoor season, really. That's perfect. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Pretty confident sounding Ella Gibson there, winner of the uh, individual gold medal in the compound women's competition. Uh, Chef, she was talking about, was it RSP? She's got that right? What, what's that? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to find out. She mentioned also Antalya, uh, the first stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup season. As I said earlier on, Chef, you're going to be joining me for that. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to that. It's uh, the the first real outing Hello of the there. world stage. How are you stage. doing? That is a brilliant win for you just there. Congratulations. Tell me, how do you feel right now? I am happy. <laughs> What's that about? I win. That's, that's, that's all. I'm happy. It's like some satisfaction for all time what I make for archery, is this feeling. And it was a bit of a close match there up until the last end. You had to keep fighting for every arrow. Um, what was your process? Uh, I was nervous after second end uh, because it was not good for me. And after the last nine when I shoot, uh, the wind come to left side of me and I was nervous at the moment, but I, I still hope I can win. And it's a great start for the season. Uh, what tournaments have you got next? How will this, this event help you? How will this win help your next tournaments? I don't know, maybe in Turkey it's windy and I will go all World Cup and uh, World Championships and all country have a ticket to European game. Maybe I go. I must be in the trials. That's perfect. Thank you. Congratulations again. Well done. So Joseph Bazanski there uh, looking ahead to the season. He's got to win the trials to be part of the Slovakian team heading to the European games in uh, Poland in uh, June. Uh, but, uh, of course, he rudely interrupted you, Chef. Uh, you, you were telling us about the season ahead, and, and Joseph Bozanski is saying he's going to all of the World Cups, starting in Turkey. Yeah, um, so the Turkey will be interesting to see where the rest of the world is. Now we're looking at Europe, but uh, obviously there is a lot more than just Europe. And um, Yeah, that's, that's really the real start of the World Cup season, and uh, yeah, I, I hope to see what uh, people have done this winter. Yeah, it's uh, certainly proved to be a promising lineup here in uh, Lillishaw, the National Sports Centre. The compound competition now done here. It's a beautiful location on the uh, in the Midlands, uh, the west side of England, Ladies near the border of uh, Wales. The for the uh, so whilst the uh, 
action on the range is complete for the compound competition at least it's uh, still time there is still time of course for the medal ceremonies and uh, we'll start with the compound women's individual by trustee of the Fletcher's Trust, Ian McClellan. Bronze medal, representing Estonia, Zell Yatmar. World number four, Lizelle Yatmar from Estonia collecting the bronze medal in the compound women's individual competition. She was ranked first after the ranking round, shooting 700 out of a possible 720. She beat uh, Zik Mundova of the Czech Republic before losing out to Skolna, but they came back in the bronze medal match against Andrea Rodnes from the Philippines to get herself on the podium and a nice little check to celebrate Easter weekend. Silver medal representing Luxembourg, Maria Skolna. It's been an impressive week for Luxembourg, uh, in particular, Maria Skolna. second podium appearance for her having medaled in the compound mixed team competition she collects a silver medal to go along with her easter bunny gold medal representing great britain ella gibson She's risen through the ranks over the last 12 to 18 months. And uh, she's starting this season with another gold medal. The world number one, Ella Gibson from Great Britain, taking gold here at the European Grand Prix on home soil. Excuse the pun, but she's certainly going to have a target on her back for the rest of this season. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Great Britain. <laughs> So there we have it, uh, the medals handed out for the compound women's individual competition. It's our Yatma on the right with bronze, Maria Skolna from Luxembourg on the left with the silver medal, but it's Golden Girl Gibson collecting the top spot on the podium here in Lillishaw.
ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the compound men. The last of the action here in this compound session sees the medal ceremony for the men's individual competition. Medals will be presented by World Archery Europe Executive Board Member Hilda Gibson. Gifts will be presented by Trustee of the Fletcher's Trust, Andrew McMillan. Bronze medal representing Italy, Marco Bruno. Good start to the season for the world number 40. Marco Bruno from Italy collecting the bronze medal. He beat Konstantinos Strakiotis in the bronze medal match. Promising performance from the whole of the Greek team here in the compound division, but uh, the medal goes to Italy and Marco Bruno. Silver medal representing Israel, Shamai Yamrom. Keep an eye on this 18 year old. Israel now coached by uh, former British coach Richard Priestman. Came through the ranking round with a 7.06 out of a possible 7.20 and was really in the races in the gold medal match. Just pipped at the post by a single point. Uh, a silver medal shows there's a huge amount of promise in Shammai Yamrom. Gold medal representing Slovakia. Joseph Bozanski. Experience paid off in the end. He talked of nerves through the final, but uh, he turned it around in set number, sorry, in end number three, I should say, only for uh, Yamrom to draw level in set number four. And he just did it in the end with a perfect 30, the gold medal going to Slovakia's Joseph. Bozanski. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Slovakia. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. There we have it, uh, bronze for Marco Bruno from Italy. The silver goes to Israel's Shamai Yamrom, just 18 years old. But it's gold all the way for Joseph Bazanski from Slovakia. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this morning's programme. We are due to recommence at two o'clock with recurve afternoon, starting with the recurve women team match. Thank you.
Well, it's been a brilliant session here in Lillishall at the first leg of the European Grand Prix of 2023. The action started with the gold medal match in the compound women's competition, and it was the host nation, Great Britain, led by Ella Gibson, taking the gold medal. Moved on to the men's team competition between Italy and an up-and-coming Greek team. In the end, the Italians had just too much celebrating with their Easter bunnies. Mixed team gold saw Luxembourg taking on Great Britain. you got to say, Great Britain were probably the favourites, but in the end, Maria Schollner and Teal Seward uh, did their business taking gold in that competition. On to the uh, compound women's individual competition. Schollner from Luxembourg appeared again in a final, but this time pipped at the post by Ella Gibson collecting her second gold of the tournament. Rizal Yatmo rounding out that podium in the women's competition before we turned our attention to the men's competition. Marco Bruno taking the bronze, beating Konstantinos Strakiotis. But it was Joseph Bozanski who finished things off with a perfect 30 to take the gold in the compound men's competition from Shamai Yamron from Israel, someone that we definitely need to keep an eye on. Chef, brilliant uh, compound session. Uh, can I ask you to come back at two o'clock for the recurve competition? Yeah, let's say so, yeah. <laughs> well, there we have it. Chef Van der Berg, our expert analyst here in Lillishaw. Uh, we will be back in 40 minutes uh, to conclude the competition in the recurve at the European Grand Prix. We'll see you then.